y'all. Welcome to Law Chat 101 with Gerja Bhargav Patel, your legal BFF. On today's Law Chat 101, I'm going to be talking to you about your coaching program or your membership program and what you legally need to stay legally solid in your program. So there are five things that you need to make sure that you are legally legit. Now, before I start that, a couple of things. Number one, the information that I'm sharing today is for educational informational purposes only. It is not meant for your specific business. So if you do have some legal questions about your business, go talk to a lawyer and get yourself legally solid. But with that being said, how can you help me spread the word about today's video and all the other videos that are coming out of Law Chat? The best way to do that is number one, subscribe. Number two, share it with your friends and family. Share it on social media share with them on the phone, share it via text. That is the way that I can get more people to hear what's going on in the business and legal world and also to help them do better in their businesses as well. But then just get some more traction because at the end of the day, we're here to help each other and spread the word and spread the wealth with that, right? Okay, now let's get started. So five things that you need, and this is not the only five things that you need, but it's literally some of the five and one of the most important five things you want to make sure that you have already in place or you are getting it in place ASAP. Okay. Number one is your contract, your agreement with your client. Now, whether you call that a service agreement, whether you call that a membership agreement, coaching program agreement, mastermind, whatever group that you're heading and that you are collecting members into, you want to have an agreement. This agreement should cover the big things like the term of the membership program, how much they're paying, what is the refund policy. I'm going to have a whole nother Law Chat 101 talking specifically about the coaching membership mastermind group, but you just need to make sure that you do have a client agreement at that point representing what your mastermind is about and also the terms of being in the mastermind or the coaching group or in this membership that you have out there. Number two, even when you are doing an onboarding call, even when you have any type of verbiage or the narratives or the language that is being used on your websites, you cannot give a guarantee unless you truly want to give a guarantee. I know that in some marketing worlds, you want to give a guarantee. Well, if you are giving a guarantee, make sure you can live up to the guarantee. And if you don't live up to the guarantee, you need to make sure that you live up to the penalty that comes from not living up to the guarantee. I know that was just like a little whirlwind of words, but the thing is that guarantees can be very dangerous. And so you don't want to give a guarantee of a certain outcome or say that they will become, you know, eight digit millionaires or, you know, something like that, unless you know for a fact that what you are providing is proven and you can actually achieve that as long as the other side is doing the work, right? Because quite frankly, coaching programs, membership programs, mastermind programs are as good as what the member is putting into it, unless you're truly handholding somebody and doing all the work for them. And so that's generally not the point of a group coaching or a mastermind or like a membership program, right? So Give a guarantee if you are ready to stand by it and ready to stand by the, any type of penalties that might come from the falling short of the guarantee. Otherwise, make sure you're not guaranteeing anything. Make sure it's abundantly clear on your website. Make sure it's in your contract. Make sure it's in your terms and agreement. It needs to be clear as day that you're not guaranteeing any type of specific results. And that at the end of the day, the client that is part of your membership program is taking full responsibility for the choices that they are making under the program and for the direction that they're taking, even though you might be guiding them, but ultimately it's their choice what they do. Number three, disclaimer of any type of professional advice, unless you are giving professional advice. So for example, you heard me earlier giving a disclaimer also, because at the end of the day, I don't know what your business is like. I also don't know what your legal needs are. I also don't know what your pain points are or what issues you might be having. I'm giving you very generic information. So while I'm a lawyer, I'm a professional, I'm licensed here in Texas, I still cannot give you professional advice because I don't know what your circumstances are like. I can definitely educate you and prompt you and maybe spark some 
questions on your end where you would hopefully go to a lawyer and have that conversation. So similarly in your business, same thing. If you are even a doctor, but you're still giving very generic advice or somebody who is licensed professionally in whatever field that you are doing or discipline that you're in, if you are not giving specific health advice, medical advice, financial advice, legal advice, or any other sort of professional advice, make sure you are abundantly clear on that as well. Because consumers are the ones that the laws are protecting mostly, especially the federal laws. And when we are misguiding them or miscommunicating them or showing up as something that we are not trying to do or might be implicitly doing and they're receiving it that way and they're converting that conversation into professional advice and then they run and take it and do what you've exactly said to them when it could be absolutely opposite of what their healthcare provider has said to them or their CPA has said to them or, you know. So you wanna make sure that you're abundantly clear that this is just educational and informational purposes and please go seek proper professional advice from the professional in that area that you're looking for. So that is super duper important. Again, that needs to be in your contracts, that needs to be in your terms and conditions on your website, that even is something that as important as putting it as an asterisk when somebody is uh, taking a course from you, or even if it's something that they've signed up for and they've read the terms and conditions or they've checkmarked it onto your website before signing up for the membership, but if you're giving a course about something, make sure just let them know that, hey, this is educational. This is not professional advice that is directly meant for you or only for you. Number four, your website. Your website needs to be legally solid. Now, it has to have a privacy policy, absolutely required, especially if you are collecting a lot of personal information. Personal information can be as simple as a name or as complicated as getting somebody's you know fingerprints or getting somebody's other very intimate details about them or their accounts or something that is tangible but is very personal so whatever information that you have in there you need to make sure that you have a privacy policy letting them know what you're doing with this information you also need to know if it's confidential like what part of the membership program or the information that you're gathering is confidential so that you can also alleviate some of their uh, concerns that they might be having if uh you know they come up and they say well i don't want to share this information well are you going to keep it confidential or is it going to be something that you will sell it off to somebody or keep it in your records but it could potentially be leaked to somebody or a third party so these are informations that you need to be clear about and you also need to not hide behind the bush or anything like that it needs to be upfront explicit and clear in the privacy policy that you have privacy policy again is required for your website and is required on the bottom i would highly suggest having on every single page of your website and then also when somebody is checking out or opting in for something that's free have it abundantly clear before they give you their information, their personal information of any sort, that they're agreeing to the privacy policy. So have it be a check mark. Now, same thing with terms and conditions. While it's not required, it's definitely something that's highly recommended. Why? Because terms and condition is basically letting your user know, doesn't matter who that user is, how they are allowed to interact with your website. So it's the rules of your website, the rules of the land, the lay of the land, as they say. And it kind of guides them and lets them also know what your disclaimers are, what your disclosures are, what your refund or cancellation policies are, what services you're offering, what services are included or not included, and a lot of other information like that. So that way they are understanding that this is a private website that is held by you and there are some rules and those that have to abide by those rules as well. Number five is the copyright statement. Now, I firmly believe intellectual property is a very, very important clause that is sometimes missed, ignored, or just said, you know what, copy paste, I don't care. But copyright protection, trademark protection, patent protection, trade secret protection, in general, all intellectual property protection, they're part of your assets of your business. They're the intangible assets in your business. They're assets that can value your business very high if you protect it properly. And one of the ways to protect it properly is to make sure that you tell everybody that what you have on here is copyright protected. 
And I would even go a step further for certain things that is maybe, you know, your blog post, your photographs, or even a course that you have. If you want to go ahead and register that with a copyright office, that's even better because that way now you can actually take someone to court for infringing on your copyright. So you need to have abundant and clear on, on your website, the copyright sign, the date, and that all rights are reserved. Now, with that being said, in your terms and conditions, you can also f go into further detail about that. And so you can say, hey, listen, all rights are reserved. However, if you are a member, then these are the things that I am licensing to you for a limited use and for a limited time. And so that way you are giving your copyright notice to everybody and you're letting them know that I might be giving you courses here. I might be allowing you to use my stock pictures. I might be allowing you to use my products or my services, but this is how you can use it because it's not yours ultimately, unless you are wanting to give them the right. To be, so you want to assign them that copyright right, meaning you're saying, it's yours now, I don't want it, you take it from me, and you own the copyright to that. And that's okay too. If that's how your business functions, if that's how your services and your products function, that is okay. There's no right or wrong answer because it really truly depends on how your business functions. And so see how it functions, see what's the best appropriate way to manage your copyright. But in general, on your website, for anybody walking through the website, whether they are a member of your program, whether they are not a member of your program, uh, they're just somebody who is trying to figure things out and they're just, you know, scoping and scoping the market, have a very generic copyright, all rights reserved at the bottom of every single page, because ultimately that will be protecting you and will be protecting your copyright interest. Again, a, your terms and conditions should also talk about the copyright and the intellectual property and the trademark as well, and what your user can or cannot do and what your members can or cannot do as well. It's very important for them to know. Your contracts, your agreements with your clients should also be abundantly clear about the copyright and the trademark and any other you know, intellectual property uh, assets that you might have and that they might be using or have interaction with. So these are the top five things that you need to make sure that are already solid in your membership program, whether you're coaching, mastermind, whether you're just a health membership program or somebody who, a membership program where people are just getting products from you on a week, on a monthly or a weekly, whatever it is. But these five points are really important and you need to make sure that you have them. Now, of course, again, this is not the only five points that you need to have, but these are some of the big five points that you need to make sure that you have checkmarked done on your list for your legal checklist, okay? And again, remember, share the love because that is the only way this YouTube channel is gonna go up in the rankings and more and more people can benefit from the information coming out of here is by liking, is by subscribing, is by sharing and, and showing that love out there. Leave a comment, leave a review on Law Chat with Gearja. Listen to some of those episodes also have some amazing entrepreneurs that are coming out speaking about their stories. It's mentorship through storytelling and it's also tangible, practical tips that you can use and apply to your business as well. So don't forget that and share the love. And I will catch you next time.